Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. It is Local Chat, episode 142. I am your host, Will Crosby. Joining me this week, Jake Terrio. Hello. And joining me also, as always, it's Ian Gibson. Hello. Folks, <laughs> we're here to talk about video games and all things that I want to talk about. Uh, trickle down economics. Where do you fit in? Um, <laughs> we'll be going over that in a little bit uh, when Ron calls in. But for now, we got a little portion I like to call the chit chat section. Uh, currently, it just says one word, uh, and I don't know what that means. Uh, it's it's pronounced lucky, and it's okay. what I feel right now. Why? Uh, well, you see, it's podcast night, which means uh -huh. I disappear for an hour and a half, and Maggie has to go entertain herself. And I just went out there right before the podcast started, and boy, do I feel lucky because she's decided to watch the little mermaid live action Ooh. which she was try she was trying to get both of us to watch and i guess she gave up and is going to watch it by herself so i dodged that bullet folks i never have to watch it thank god they say it's a whole new world it's not a world i want to be in <laughs> actually that's Dude. not the right movie is it yeah that's yeah that's is the it? right movie oh. yeah i thought that was a i don't know i've never seen it so I'm just quoting it. Oh, you've never seen the original? I'm not, I haven't seen most no, Disney you're right. films. You're, you're right, though. It, uh, I can see how you can confuse that for Aladdin. Because when I sing it in my head, I kind of go, that kind of sounds like an Aladdin part of your world song, is, I thought, I don't remember which is which. I thought both world songs were from uh, Aquamarine. What's her name? Little Mermaid. But then it turns out one of them's from Aladdin, so I wasn't sure. Part of your world is from... Little Mermaid. And then... I can show you the world. It's from Aladdin. It's still Aladdin. Oh, That's what I I, I Yeah. Isn't it? I don't remember. Yes. Who am I? Folks, we're here Look, to talk about the Little Not Mermaid cast. Mermaid we're way too far away. I was going to make jokes at Ronald Reagan's expense, but we're way too far away from that now. <laughs> Old Ronnie. The actor turned politician turned lover. I wish he were ours. Are we going to talk about Nancy, or are we just going <laughs> to let that one go? Nope. We're going <laughs> to leave it at that. Don't let that one blow over. Uh, moving on here, folks. Uh, wow, we got really literally nothing in the chit-chat section, nothing you guys want to talk about? We didn't even bother to write anything in there? Make me feel... Well, somebody filled half the fucking document with games they've been playing, <laughs> so maybe we should get to that first. Well, Will. fine. Moving on to the games we've been playing section. I guess we won't chit or chat. Um, I guess I'll go first because, like Ian said, I filled up about half a page. You know what? I'll move my notes to an external document to not burden you with my genius. <laughs> no, and my it's fine. I just, I just find it funny that you're complaining our chit-chat section is weak when the rest of the rundown is stock well, full of shit. <laughs> because without my notes, it wouldn't be that crazy. Uh, let's start, let's start off with the easy one. Gordy and the Monster Moon. This is from the Frog Fractions guy, who also made Glitterman, Glitterman's Grove, which is Frog Fractions 2. Twin Beard. Uh, this is a Pico 8 game, so it's got that great sort of, uh, pixel art, like, 8-bit, 16-bit. Uh, actually, I think it is 8-bit. 8-bit sort of function. The yeah. name. Uh, pixelate yeah you're right um 8-bit uh you are a pumpkin you've land on the titular monster moon uh you are a space pumpkin uh at one point the character is like why am i a pumpkin and he's like well maybe you're a guy inside a pumpkin and the pumpkin's your space suit um and you basically go around screen to screen collecting uh, different items and those items let you unlock new areas and traverse new traversals into other screens the map is one big grid so all four directions out of the place like mm -hmm. line up and all um uh, yeah, real it, quick real quick can i ask can i yes. ask because i think i know the answer based on some things i read but this is the number one question i have and it's going to determine if i'm going to play this game or not is this frog fractions three i mean you're gonna have to play to find out no fuck you 
because the first part of the Frog Fractions games is tolerable only because you know there is more to it eventually. And quite frankly, I don't want to play a Twin Beard game that is just the front part. Um, I, I haven't found any reference to a Frog Fractions 3 in it, but I will say, aside from that, it is not like simple beginning games of Frog Fractions. It's actually a legit, like, fun little... I think I beat it in an hour and a half, like, little game to play. I mean, it's $3 yeah. on Steam. Um, but okay, no, we'll I, I don't think you're going to be okay. going there. Um, but it was fun, uh, and it, it certainly, like, uh, like completed itself well, and, and the little things that you figure out along the way, you're like, that was there the whole time? Like, what the frick? I should have noticed that, and stuff like that. A little tunic sort of thing there. Um, so I really enjoyed it, and uh, it just seemed like he probably discovered the Pico 8 and was like, ah, I'm going to make something. It'll be probably be out around Halloween, so let me just make it spooky themed. Uh, and I yeah. thought it came out pretty well. Moving on uh, to the next game here on the list, uh, Heroes of Might and Magic 3. Folks, I don't know if you know this, but there's a, a rabid fan base for the Heroes of Might and Magic 3 people uh, for the game there. Uh, I grew up playing Heroes of Might and Magic 2, uh, my mom used to fix computers for people at our church, and one of the people, Mr. Like Salichetti or something, I can't remember his name, he gave me um, a disc for Heroes of Might and Magic 2 that I think he bought for his nephew or like his grandson or something, and they didn't want it, uh, so he gave it to me, uh, and I still have the like giant manual for it and the cards and everything. Uh, so I played a bunch of that as a kid, never understood how to play it. Uh, and then recently, I honestly don't remember how it came up, but I was like, oh, I should play Heroes of Might and Magic 2 again. Oh, wait, I heard 3 is like the more ravenous fan base and like people go back to that one. So I installed the HD mod. I installed the unofficial expansion packs, uh, all this sort of stuff. I've been playing the hell out of it. It's super fun. It's really great. Um, I've been watching some YouTube videos of people playing it on possible mode. I am, this is the most I've enjoyed a game in a while. There's just one giant problem. I'm not racist? good at the game. Oh, oh <laughs> I'm okay. very bad at the game. And I'm like, do I want to take the time to learn this game well enough to make it like my nostalgia pastime game? And I haven't yeah. quite landed on the answer for it yet. Part of me was like, if I'm going to put in that effort, maybe I should do it with two, even though three is the better game. Um, but I just Can I ask don't you a question? Know. Sorry, I'm, I'm a little question boy tonight. W what What is Heroes of Might and Magic 3? I've seen screenshots. I'm not sure I understand. What is, what is this game? What is the gameplay like? So, yeah, you know, I should have hit that on the front. You're not wrong. Here's a Might and Magic 3. Uh, so funnily enough, Heroes of Might and Magic is the giant strategy game, while Might and Magic is the uh, focused on the heroes of the Might and Magic universe, which seems like a terrible way to name your games. Uh, so Heroes of Might and Magic is a grand strategy game uh, uh, that has campaigns and stuff, but basically you have heroes and you have uh, like specific towns. And so... You spawn on the map, everyone spawns with their town and with their heroes. Uh, you can have up to eight heroes. Each town is like themed. So there's the pirate town, there's the necropolis town, there's the knight's town, there's the all that sort of stuff. And like then, World of Warcraft. Yeah, so then all of the heroes have types, but they're also named. So like there's barbarians, there's witches, there's warlocks, all that sort of stuff. So you get your main hero, you spawn at your town, and then throughout the game, you can hire more heroes. Uh, the like strategy you do in the game uh, is you have your main hero that you do everything with mostly, and all your other heroes are running around the map uh, picking up resources because there's resources and little weird fountains and witches' huts and uh, rivers and goblins and all sorts of stuff all over the map, and you are sending your people out to claim mines, claim... Uh, different buildings uh and then killing things to get access to the more areas in the map so a lot of the maps like blocked off by harder enemies at the beginning and so you are mostly working your network out to eventually defeat the other people usually take over their towns and stuff uh each day you accrue money or resources and stuff like that each week uh all of the things in your towns and everyone's towns reset like they um i guess breed 
uh, all the new, like, oh. <laughs> you get all your new units <laughs> refresh so you can hire more units. So you're spending every day building up your town, exploring the map, finding people, weak refreshes. You can sometimes, like, you can either go all the way back to your town and pick up the new guys, or you could chain your you, your lesser heroes to bring the new guys to your your main force who's kind of, like, running around and exploring the map. Uh, the battles... You can auto resolve or it's tactically doing things. The big like thing you want to do is separate your units into stacks and have like a power stack. So if uh, the 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 way it works is like I have 60 orcs, but these 60 orcs, each one of the 60 has a certain amount of health. So when they get hit by something, it could take them down to 55. Or if I only have a one stack of that orc, no matter how much damage is done to him, it only kills the one. So you want to, like, try to think about gotcha. that and strategically place, like, your one guys around. And then at this point, Heroes of Might and Magic 3 is, like, oh, do it this way, do it this way, um, because, like, that's the best way to do it in the game. But it's also interesting because still not everything's kind of figured out. Like, nine times out of ten, the AI will always, during a siege, will attack the lower left-hand corner of the screen first, but just sometimes <laughs> they don't. So it's, like... It's crazy stuff. I'm watching this guy on YouTube who is literally like, I'm going to go up over here and we're going to take that and we're going to, I think I, we're going to auto resolve this battle. Actually, I'm going to go in. I can do less losses and, and, and we've got it, ladies and gentlemen. Like he just sounds <laughs> like a, like a, like chess match announcer, like the way he's just going through it. And, uh, it's interesting to see when he like gets an auto resolve situation. It's like, He's, he just confidently is like, I'm not going to lose that many guys. And so he'll go do it manually and lose less people. Um, so I've, I've pretty much uh, brute forced my way into being like, I'm going to watch videos about it. I'm going to continue to play games of it because I'm starting to understand how everything works. But it is a game you look at and you're like, oh, I just pick up units, go around and kill things. And it, if you play it like that, you won't get anywhere. Like I was... I was sort of turtling in a mission in the campaign and I was like, what is wrong with this? And I looked it up and in the guide, it's like, so mission two is probably the easiest mission in the entire game. I'm like, what? Oh and they're God. like, yeah, just pick up the angels at the starting area and just go to each town and defeat them in order. So I restarted the map, went and grabbed the angels, went around in order and finished it in 15 minutes. Like, I was just like, oh, like, you have to think about what you're doing. You can't like, it's almost like every turn counts. And obviously that changes with the difficulty, but uh, it was, it was, it was pretty interesting. So here's a mind magic three. Uh, I might stream a little bit of it at some point, but I I'm enjoying it. It, it looks so similar and it's just more of a gameplay improvement from two that I'm, I like overlook the, how much I want to just play two uh, and get my nostalgia on, but having a pretty good time with that oh gosh that's a lot of talking um yeah i'm sorry i can i'm gonna save one of them for jake to introduce because uh it's also on my list uh and we can get to my points during that and then the final game i'll do really quick jupiter hell it is a doom roguelike taking place on jupiter instead of mars uh it is really fun uh it's it's got great quips. Well, it can't take place on Jupiter. Jupiter's a gas giant. Oh, it can't take... Yeah, I know. It takes place on... Uh... This is me, Jake. I watched the trailer. Uh, I can't do that. I'm Patrick. I don't know what voice I'm doing here. I'll settle with Patrick. Um, and no, it takes place on the moons. You're on Europa, I'm pretty sure, at the beginning. Uh, anyways, I just want to shout out. It's a great roguelike. It looks awesome. Super fun. Fantastic tutorial. Just nails what you need to know about roguelikes um here's how you, like here's also how the game works we're just going to take you through one level of a roguelike uh and then mm -hmm. then you're off into the campaign like from tutorial so uh super fun highly recommend it uh if you like roguelikes it is a true roguelike uh so go uh go and be merry uh i'll take a break at that point uh ian you want to run through your, your two little boys here I'm interested in one of these. I want to hear what Ian has to say about so, it. So, Ian, don't talk. Yes. Because I don't want Jake to hear it. Okay, fair. Um, I did not expect this year to fall in love with a little boy named Garl. 
But I did, folks. I've been playing a little game called Sea of Stars. You guys heard of this game? Mm hmm. So Sea of Stars is basically like uh, it's from the studio that made The Messenger, which was like a Ninja Gaiden, basically heavily inspired by Ninja Gaiden new game. And this is them doing the same thing, but with Chrono Trigger, I've been led to believe. Um, so it's a turn based uh, 16-bit RPG. It looks fantastic. Um, <clears throat> been playing it. It's a lot of fun. Uh, Garl in particular. So you basically play as this uh, boy and girl who are presumed to be brother and sister from what I can tell. And when they're kids, they're like, you know, it's the two of them and their friend Garl. And they're <laughs> like, we're going to we're we're going to go in this cave. We're super strong. We're going to go adventure like the adults. And they go in this cave and this monster shows up and immediately fucking takes out Garl's eye. Just fucking takes this kid's eye out. And I'm like, oh, my God. God. And then like he's just so happy go lucky though and you meet him a couple years later and he's got like a scar on his eye and he's just like don't worry I'll make you a sandwich. And he's like he's like the first party member you get outside of the core 2. And the story is all like, oh, these core two, like they have this mysterious background. They've been chosen to be these like prestigious warriors. They had to train for 10 years and they're like now they're prepared to go on this big adventure. And like it's it's just for them. They had to do all these tests and Garl shows up and he's just like, hey, guys, I'm coming along, too. And they're like, <laughs> oh, but you didn't really train and you're you don't know magic. And he's like, I, I don't care. I know how to cook. And I got this uh, pot lid as a shield. So I'm coming oh, with you. And he, like, I've only played a couple more hours, but he literally like you show up and there's like this like elder god cloud who's just like, oh, yes, the two new warriors. And who are you? <laughs> and it's just so great. <laughs> like he's he's fine as a party member. Um, like he has a little bit of healing ability, which is nice, but it's just so funny that the story's leaning into these as like two prophetic warrior children, and then they're just friend that that really wants to tag along. Um, yeah, the game's gorgeous. The gameplay is really fun. Uh, I played about four hours of it. I I don't think I'm gonna play any more of it though, because even though the game total is like twenty twenty five hours, it is it it is a little I don't want to say slow, but it's definitely like hey, let's get you invested in the story and, you know, you're going to do this area and then you're going to do that area. So it's not like super fast paced gameplay necessarily. And I'm at, at I don't want to say at this point, at this point in this year of games upon games upon games, I have played enough of this game to be like, yeah, this is good. It's not a goatee contender for me. And I don't think me playing it for another 10, 15, 20 hours is going to necessarily add to my enjoyment of it necessarily. And so I'm like, OK, I'm good. Cool game. I got my fill. I don't feel the need to keep playing this. So next game, you know, but that being said, if you're if you've ever had any interest in Chrono Trigger in pixel JRPGs, turn based uh, RPGs, etc. If you just want to know more about this delightful little boy named Garl, uh, Definitely check out CS Stars. It is on PlayStation Plus, um, and a and lot of people. Game Pass, love it. I think. Yeah, it's on Game Pass too. Oh, it is on Game Pass. Yeah, you fired up your PlayStation Fuck. Five for no reason. <laughs> I did. I fired up my PlayStation Five the first time in like four fucking months. <laughs> to oh, play well. anyways, CS Stars. To play Callisto Protocol. At least I didn't buy it. At least, at least I knew that it was. That on would have been so great. To only play four um, hours of the game. I do my favorite yeah. subgenre of of discussion here is Ian being like, "Yeah, this game's really good. I like it. I'm not gonna play it anymore." <laughs> but I totally, I totally yeah. get your reason. It's just, it's just, I want to yeah. make a it's super like, cut of all the times that you've said that. It's like he found That's a hair fair. in his food halfway through, but he's like, "It was so good, though. It was like so good." But I won't be finishing it. <laughs> but I want to, I want to know about um, this next one. Yeah, so this next game is, um, how do I put this? It's a submarine game. It's called Chance of Sonar. And basically, you're underwater trying to hide from audio acoustic seeking equipment. Uh, <laughs> and seeing if there's a chance that you could hear it. I don't think that's right. Yes. Uh, anyways, it's called Chance of Sonar. Um, honestly, I don't feel like spelling that out loud. 
And if you just Google that, you'll probably get close enough. So this is a puzzle game. Um, best way to describe this is it's uh, pretty colorful, isometric. You're running around a world, talking to people and interacting with objects. But the puzzle aspect is that it's basically a Tower of Babel situation where you're constantly running into people who are speaking a language that you don't understand. Um, and so when you talk to them, you basically have icons for words or uh, short phrases. And then you have a little journal that you can. Um, so if somebody says like uh, if somebody if you talk to somebody and they say icon exclamation point, then you can be like. I think that means hello. And then you can like open your journal and be like, I think this means hello. And then every time they say that thing, you can hover over it or get a little thing that says hello question mark. So basically you can start to plug and play what you think these icons mean, what words or phrases they represent. Um, and then there's periodic checkpoints where there'll be like you walk through a door, you talk to somebody and then they'll pause the game and they'll like have you open up your journal and have this page. And it's like, like a little quiz. It's like is that a stone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's like somebody it's like somebody waving their hand, and then it's like what were what icon is this? And if you guess it correctly, then it will tell you definitively what that means. And so, for example, for hello, you could do that, and it's like well, actually, it means hello, goodbye. It could be used in either context, and you're like, okay, that's fair. Um, so you don't have to guess it exactly. You just have to know it well enough to be able to match it to a picture of whatever that object or action is. Um, so I played probably two or three hours of this game. And folks, I'm not going to play it anymore. <laughs> but in this case, it's because I, I don't think it's that good of a puzzle game. <laughs> I have a reason for this one. <sighs> It's not just um, general not wanting to play it anymore. <laughs> no, I got a valid reason for this one. Because I don't think the game's that long. I think oh. it's only like ten, like eight to ten hours total. But um, basically, the problem I have with this game is that it's super fucking linear. So it's like... it. I'll give you an example. So early on, you go to this abbey. And you go to the abbey, and they're like, hey, over here's the cemetery. Well, sorry... In the context of the game, they're like, over here's an icon, over here's a ch over here's another icon. And you go to those and you figure out, oh, that icon must be cemetery because that's where I am, etc. But anyways, you go to a location that has three or four different spots and there's people doing things in each of them. And I was dicking around in those spots and I'm learning some words. And then I hit a point where I was like, I don't know what to do next. There's nothing more to do here. And then I pulled up a walkthrough. And that's when it was revealed to me that this game is super fucking linear. And it's like, it doesn't matter that there's four areas. You have to go to this area to solve this puzzle first. And that gets you something to go over here to solve this puzzle. And then that gets you over here to solve this puzzle. And fuck you, I don't want to play a game like that. Um, not just in general, but like if the game's about language and about trying to understand different situations of the language and try and mix and match and understand, I don't think it's best to present that as a game where you literally have to solve this. You This is the puzzle you have to do mm -hmm. next to then do mm -hmm. the next puzzle. Yeah, um, it's kind of it's kind of like um, Case of the Golden Idol is is somewhat linear because the cases are presented linear, linearly, but inside the case, you can choose what order you reveal the clues. Mm -hmm. And then in the solution page, there's three or four panels and you can choose which one you want to focus on first. You're like, do I want to focus on figuring out who did what? Do I want to focus out on whose name it is? Do I want to focus mm -hmm. out like who was in what location at what time? And so you can crack the, the puzzle in different ways. And, Chance of Sin are fantastic premise of trying to iconography figure out these languages because there are multiple languages in context and and there's really cool things where like uh, uh, I have two languages that I'm learning right now and one of them does plural by having two of the same icon and the other one does plural by literally having a plural icon and then one of the one icon and it's like just a cool little distinction and it's like that's so fucking cool I'm having so much fun playing this game except I'm not having fun because they're like forcing you down a linear path to solve these puzzles and uh yeah so i don't know that i can recommend this honestly i think it was 20 bucks and i it's maybe play it one day when it's on sale 
yeah. but I think they kind of shot themselves in the foot with how they presented the puzzles in this game. Sure. Mm. Yeah, because I, I watched a trailer and definitely I was like, oh, this this looks interesting. Um, but I hadn't pulled the trigger on it. And so I, when I saw that it was on your list, I was interested in getting your thoughts. And so, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll wait till it goes on sale. Yeah, it's probably a good sale pickup because I, I think it's worth trying if it was cheaper, but 20 bucks right out of the gate right now, even with all the people saying like, oh, this is one of the best puzzle games of all time. It's on my goatee list, etc. I don't know. People get better fucking taste in, in puzzle games, maybe. <laughs> That's harsh. That's harsh. But but we just had we just had fucking over din. We just had case of the golden idol. We just had Baba is you. We just had all these fantastic puzzle games. And this one has such a cool premise and they just blow it. So I'm not really sure why it's getting so much hype. Yeah, a lot of bad puzzle games as of recent. Uh, Jake, mm -hmm. you want to talk about the games you've been playing? Yeah, well, I'll save the the good puzzle game for the 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 bottom half of oh uh, was the there another puzzle game on your about. list uh kind of this okay. the so i wanted i i played on the the airplane i was i flew back to florida for work and then flew back and so i uh after i finished reading jeff vandermeer's hummingbird salamander i played uh i found a little game called shotgun king not about dick cheney as uh <laughs> what you might assume um it's it's a uh, it's a turn-based strategy game where it's chess. Chess, the original turn-based strategy game. But um, you're the king, and instead of having any other pieces, you have a gun. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. So oh, it's, uh, it's got an added layer of um, after each... Uh, I mean, the, the, the premise is you're like ascending up the floors of these castles to take out the other king at the top of the castle. Um, and so as you ascend up each floor, there's a little bit of like a deck building element where it'll give you sets of cards, one of which is like a positive and one of which is a negative. So you'll get one and then the other side gets one. Um that create interesting modifiers about like, you know, the range or the power of your gun, how many pieces and what type of pieces the other army has. Cause that's all just regular chess pieces that move in all the same ways. They don't have any guns. You're the only one with a gun. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, it's, it was just so quirky and it's pretty fun. Once you kind of get into the groove of it, um, I mean like, Oh, it's chess, but I have a gun. <laughs> Instead of, uh, you know, operating. I mean, because the king arguably is the weakest piece on the chessboard. Versatile, but weak. And so you're like, what if you just give him a, a shotgun? Can you, can you shoot it, the other is player? It, is it still... Huh? Uh, like there were two questions. Chess. I got two questions at once. I, I was asking if you could shoot the other player, since you're the king. Just shoot the other player playing chess with you. No, it's, you're an anthropomorphized king. There's well, no like players. This. You're the literal chess piece, and so you're trying like to this. take out the other king. No, I want okay. you to shoot. Dumb question. Um, <laughs> smart question. <laughs> mm. Is it still turn-based? Yeah. Well, it's interesting because you, you, don't, you don't move once, and then they'll move a single piece. The if there's like a speed mechanic where certain pieces have certain speeds, so you'll move and you'll move, and then maybe three pawns will move at once, or a knight and a bishop will move at once. So it's okay. it's playing a little bit with the typical chess formula, um, and they don't they do kind of assume that you're going into it with an understanding of the rules of chess. They don't really explain to you how any of the pieces move, um, and then you have to no certain vocabulary like the the uh, uh, modifier card will be like oh now the bishops can move ornithogally you're like oh that means not diagonally they'll move like rooks. like a bird <laughs> no <laughs> um that was, our similar that was a good it's a good riff though oh. um yeah it's neat um any other questions no sounds cool yeah. Next, Shotgun King, uh, and the, so then I played two two games from Itch. One that Will reminded me of that I had that had been in the back of my mind for a while. The Incident at Grove Lake. It's like a like a PS one era looking found footage game about um, 
uh, like this guy leaks Area 51 documents to you and you watch through the tapes to discover what happened. It's like half an hour long. Um, has a great bit though. I got totally distracted in this, like the where you, I finally got the tape and I was then like back in my house to, to watch it. I got distracted because there was a radio and the radio was playing what sounded to me like, like um, what must have been a real radio broadcast. And it turns out it was, it was from art, art bell had some sort of like uh supernatural paranormal radio segment. Um, on the radio in like the the 70s and 80s oh. and i was like that's a marvelous bit of verisimilitude it was like this like guy talking about like an occult ritual his roommates were doing and i got totally distracted just listening to it for like eight minutes <laughs> it just went on and on and like i have to know how this ends <laughs> it had nothing to do with the story of the game but it was just so fascinating to sit there and listen to this radio broadcast um, and then it ends with a, a similar segment, uh, a, a different Art Bell segment. It ends with uh, like a call of a person that calls in claiming to be an employee at Area 51. Um, and it's pretty haunting. Um, but the game is it's good overall. It looks great. The texture of it is awesome. Um, uh, yeah, really good. Y'all should play want, it. And I, I think I, it's, want... I think it's pay what you want. On itch. Yes, it is. Yeah. I want to play it. I was putting together a list for work uh, for a social post about like indie horror games, and that was one of the ones one of the guides editor Mark Delaney recommended to me. He loves horror games, so he recommended that one. Uh, what was go. the one we played? The very first episode of Spooky Pixel. Lost where in you're Vivo. In the... God, that, that one was also scary. a good, good spooky game. Uh, as and, is uh, Palmyra Orphanage. Palmyra that Orphanage. Was fucking terrifying. I can handle the PS1 graphic ones. Like um last year for work we played Stay Out the House. And that that opening to that game, you're working at a garage or at a gas station and a van just keeps driving by. And you have to like you can't so lock good. the door because the door lock is broken, but you have to go out back to like check on something. Oh, it is the most nerve wracking I've ever been. Sorry, Jake, I was taking over. It's uh, no, no, no. You're good. Continue. Um, and then a similar game that I got from Itch, uh, Stowaway. Um, very much, uh, a, a retread of a hundred different sci-fi stories you've seen and read and heard of before. You're a little worker on a space station in orbit around the Earth, and there's a ship that's trying to dock, but it's not it's not responding to any of our hails. Okay, let's bring the ship in. Let's go inside. Oh no, everybody <laughs> inside the ship is dead, and there's some monster that now is on board our station. Mm-hmm. Um so a bunch of recognizable plot beats, but it's I think helped by a very unique visual style. It's essentially all in black and white except for the characters. Um, and like super chunky, pixely art. Um, and also, it's only like a half an hour long, so it's super easy to digest. Um, and is is has great atmosphere, sound design, and and lighting wise. It's almost pitch black the whole game. Like you finally get a flashlight, and you're like, okay, now I can finally see things. <laughs> uh, so nice. I yeah, if you're looking for just like a half hour fun little. Uh, romp through a space station um, and I think it, it the lighting in it had to be somewhat realistic because the space station you're on is always rotating and so there's like these like the the open like machinery the, like the docking bay has these big windows and like just huge streaks of light will come across it every once in a while oh, that's um, awesome. great atmosphere um, yeah and then I played Cocoon which I know Will has also played. And I thought it was a delightful little puzzle game um, and did not make me feel like t- an idiot, <laughs> like Golden <laughs> Idol did. Um, there were certainly ones that I had to like sit with and test certain puzzles that I had to like test and figure out what it was wanting me to do. And then it would click and I'd be like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I don't really even necessarily know where to start with this discussion. Um, it's no like spoilers. a sure 
I think I don't think it's a spoiler because I think it's in the trailers to say it's like a multi-dimensional puzzle game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um where the solutions the solutions to the puzzles can require you having to navigate multiple dimensions at once where you have to like do something in one place and then go back to another place and maybe even go then to like a third or fourth level to solve certain puzzles um so it it requires a lot of i there were a couple points where i almost got out a pen and paper to keep track of things but i was able to keep track of it all in my noggin um will what were your thoughts uh okay okay listen I went into this, it's, uh, let me see what my first note here is. Uh, puzzle game by Geometric Interactive, same lead gameplay designer as Limbo and Inside. So I went into this with some expectations. Uh, I said, you know, I like being inside Limbo. I like Limbo on the inside. I love the flesh monster and inside. I, I'm sad I can't get that silicone real doll model of it. <laughs> but someday oh maybe I'll show God. up what on a crazy. EBay. <laughs> merchandising crossover um so i went in with some ex- expectations you're a little moth boy like jake said you're solving all these puzzles um what did i write here puzzles are orbs you go in and out of sockets uh there's also another type type of puzzle where you unlock a ghost from destiny who follows you around and then look like that doesn't it and then he'll unlock other routes for you um so <clears throat> gorgeous video game absolutely gorgeous incredible art design um also pretty f- i didn't think about it until i heard on next lander talking about it but very quick loading times like going in and out of the different worlds um and like hopping back a one button seamless. game you only uh yeah yeah seamless loading times sorry there are no loading times it's just that fast um it's a one button game you're hitting a on everything your little like wings like curl up when you can like do something on something um my issue with the game overall is limbo and inside sort of have that left to right narrative as you're going and solving puzzles and the overarching thing this game uh, like has a narrative there's stuff happening but it just felt like they kept doing the same puzzle idea over and over again and they were just like oh here's a puzzle where you pick up the orb you put the orb on the thing Sometimes you got to go in the orb to get to the other spot uh, without the orb and go hit that thing and then go back in the orb and bring the orb out. And it felt like they were like concealing what would have just been like a room puzzle where you put a box on one thing, teleport to the other room, like in Portal. They just made it inside of rooms that were inside of each other rather than mm-hmm. in a building that just had multiple rooms. And... and Overall, I, I, I don't want to use the word easy because I don't think these puzzles were easy. Like Jake said, there were puzzles where you just have to be like, you're just sitting and thinking. You're just like, mm-hmm. huh. But not a I don't know if this is true for you, Jake, but not a lot of the puzzles I felt I could easily try. I just felt like I had to sit there and think about it. And that was what kind of annoyed me. They weren't trying puzzles. They were think about it and finish puzzles sure i mean there was one that i definitely did i do i was able to kind of test a couple iterations of solutions before i found the right one but that was the puzzle i was stuck on the longest and i think i was still only stuck on it for like 20 minutes um so yeah certainly not a a overly challenging game i would maybe push back against your thesis that all the puzzles are the same in so far as the orbs each have different uh utilities yes they each so it's like the order in which you use them sometimes is you're like oh well i definitely need the green one for this i definitely need the purple one for this it's it's a reduction Um, of it yeah i I, we didn't really mention that part each orb has a different ability that like unlocks like does something in in the worlds so like if you see like this symbol you know you have to go get the orange orb because it does a certain thing to get across that. So the the actually the mission I was stuck on the longest was probably I think it was like the second to last one where you just had to figure out the order of doing it. But uh, uh again, I like I I I don't want to say it was a bad game and and obviously it's not. 
Um, but it just like I felt a little empty at the end where I was just like I just like a li- like a little bit more of, of like something coming out of it. I did play it at from four to eight a.m. Uh, when I couldn't fall back asleep, <laughs> I, I literally sat on the couch and I was like, "Huh, Jake said Cocoon was out," so I just downloaded it and started it and beat it in one sitting. Um, so it was an enjoyable. I, think- I don't think I'm gonna go back and play it again though. Um, oh yeah, I don't think I I will either. Well, I think it's often difficult with puzzle games too that you you can't really ever fully go back to them yeah. unless it's been a long enough time that you've completely forgotten the solutions. Um, but I did um, I think miss it, a Moon Man though. Oh yeah, uh, there was it was one it was there was two. one where I had to trigger musical cues in a certain order. And I was like, positive. I was like hearing a little motif in like the the background, and I was positive that I was matching the pitches of the melody, but I could never get it to work. Um, but um, are you Ian looks at something, like Ian? Thinking of I something. have something for the news that I came across while you guys are. Uh, I don't know what the fuck you're doing, but yeah, have uh, fun. <laughs> um, I. Good. I mean, I'm I definitely zooming out because I feel like I will have to play this game. Right? This is it. This is a possible on the goatee list. I yeah, wasn't going to add else it. Is saying. No, no, it's I good. Add it. I yeah. wasn't going to add it to the goatee list. I think if it, it has a fairly ob- obtuse narrative, it certainly requires a lot of. Uh, uh, it's. I mean. It's very accessible as a puzzle game. The story that it's trying to tell is a lot denser. You know what, um, you know what I'll say, Jake? Gordy mm-hmm. and the Monster Moon is a better puzzle game than Cocoon. And it's $3. Okay. I'll have to check it out. <laughs> but it's not. But Cocoon's Frog on Fractions Game Pass. 3. But it's, it's not Frog Fractions 3. I'm winking, audio listeners. See, fuck you, because I keep looking this up, and all people have to do is somebody just needs to definitively tell me it's Frog Fractions 3, and I'll be playing that shit tonight. <laughs> Ian, it's Frog Fractions 3. No, it's not. Um, and I need to get a uh, Windows XP virtual machine running on my new computer so I can play Pirate Hunter Seize and Destroy. Oh, my God. Well, um, have, you tried, have you tried just installing it? Yeah, it, it keeps telling me that certain files are missing, and I'm like, ah, it's the you disk. Should... Ah. Oh, you should ah, just I mean, did it. you uh, go to the PC gaming wiki? Did they have anything on there? There might be like a DX honestly, voodoo wrapper that you can put around. Yeah, it. if it's an I'll XP look. game, it's probably very easy to get it running. It's not like it's a ninety-five or a three-point-one game. Mm-mm. XP yeah. two thousand three, baby. Yeah, you can probably get a wrapper for it. Uh, I doubt someone's done it. Like <clears throat> the HD mod for Heroes of Might and Magic three. Not to bring it up again, but it's like a, it's just a wrapper that someone made really nice in GUI. And everything because they use it so much, but or because a lot of people use it. Uh, cool. Anyways, where were we? Yeah, talking Cocoon's about? on Game Pass. Ian, you should give it a pop. Give it a yeah. look. See. Yeah. Well, uh, well, okay, now I'm fucking well, confused Brimley. because because I just asked, is it on the Goaty list? And you guys are like, no, 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 no. No, but, but it's got. Like, yeah, it's oh, still good charming it, though. <laughs> Fuck I'm you, sorry, you only play Goaty contenders. What do you want? Only watch Oscar winning, Oscar nominated movies. There's a fucking Forza's coming out on Tuesday of next week. The it's Quest Three comes out this week. Game. Oh, another Forza. City back up, Skylines. Man. City Skylines Two comes out in like a week and a half. Like there's too much shit going on. Build right. Cities Wargroove Two other days. is today. I think Wargroove Two is out today. Yeah, Wargroove Two is I, out today. I think today. that's right. Yeah. There's too much shit for me to play Alan something Wake that you guys are like. Alan Wake 2 comes out nah. in a couple weeks. That's I fine. Alan Wake well, one. at least if it if it is ever leaving Game Pass, just download it so you have it on standby. <laughs> I don't think you that can't works. Play that it. Doesn't, doesn't just work leave it there. Chick. Just it leave it there. Work. They can't take it from you. <laughs> I may try it. I did. I did like Inside, so I'll check it out. Um, what was your play time? Uh, like six hours. Oh, mine was like four hours. I was luxuriating. Okay, that's pretty good. I think I'll I played it, it started at four and I ended at eight thirty, so what, four and a half hours. I'll say Call the one liar. puzzle 
I really didn't like is the one where it like flings you up into the air and you have to shoot the targets oh, as they move. Oh fuck that! Sorry, this game's trash. Fuck that! <laughs> I did it like three or four times. I was so mad. I was so mad. <laughs> I was so mad. <laughs> um, that was my. I liked everything a, else. Yeah, it was a mistake for both of us to buy fake cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> it really was. They're just going to uh, show wait, up fake? in random streams. <laughs> what? Um, I will also say, uh, right, I crossed it off earlier, but right before the stream, I finished Superland Six Inches Under. And that game ends with a gnarly German song. <laughs> um, it's just all in German. And I was like, oh, this must be made by German people. Uh, it was really good. The game was fun. Uh, it is a weird uh, trip of a game, so... I highly recommend it. It's on Game Pass. Oh, great. Ian will never play it. He'll cool. get an hour in and go, you know, this is a fantastic game, but I'm well, never going to play it. Honestly, again. if you get, if I play your game for an hour, it's a fucking honor, okay? Because <laughs> it takes me a bit to get there. I hope someday when you're happy, a man walks in, no, uh, I hope you suddenly discover a game. You're like, oh, I played that for an hour. And you play it for like two more hours. And it becomes your f best game you've ever played in your entire life. And you're like, I should give games more of a chance. And then It's happened. Death Stranding. Great example. Falcor <laughs> and goes, yeah. And then crawl inside him. Come out. Uh, folks, time for the news. That's where uh, we talk about news things. I'm going to hit the news button. <laughs> Jake, you're mm -hmm. excited. You're excited enough to post your own. You know, I said to myself today, I said, we should get rid of the sponsored section because nobody does <laughs> shit there. And then Jake, with his little apple bottom jeans, boots of the fur, says, you know what? I'm going to put, I'm going to sponsor my own content. Mm. So you get to go first. Yeah, well, Black Salt Games announced some upcoming DLC for Dredge, the uh, Cthulhu fishing game from earlier this year and it looks neat is that on our goatee list i don't think so i liked it yes. but i didn't put it on the <laughs> goatee list time for it, Jake. <laughs> hey, got time. actually i did play i did play dredge for like an hour oh my um, god that was it, <laughs> that was it. <laughs> how much money are you spending to play games for an hour no wasn't it on wasn't it on game pass i don't think so no. but it was not it wasn't it's expensive i think it was like 30 dollars Oh, I, put it on my no, list. Did, I put it on my list did, today. Did I fucking buy Dredge? I hope I didn't. Oh, my I don't God. think I did. I don't have a receipt for it. So you never played it? <laughs> no, I definitely well, Maybe it was on it. Game Pass. I was don't it a remember. Steam Next Fest demo? No, it was on, it was on the TV, and I, I never turn on my PlayStation, so it must have been on X Pass. X Pass. Anyways, X Pass. Um, That's the news. That's all I got. Yeah, I just couldn't get into it, but it's. I I know a lot of people were crazy about it. So what's different about this DLC? What's the twist? What's the special sauce? Uh, ice. Vanilla. Uh, Ooh, ice. Is there it's like an, It's like, there like a, an, a. It's the like deadliest an, catch expansion. Tea? I want They're like going. An, I want like an <laughs> icebreaker mechanic, right? Where you have to like. Oh, Thread I didn't needle. I didn't see anything the in the ice. trailer to indicate that that was yeah, what was happening. Sorry, buddy. But, um, <sighs> sorry. What's yep. that hour is two? Is there a deadliest catch game? Yes, there there's got to be a deadliest yeah. catch game. There's, we'll be playing yes. it at Extra Life. Did they license Bon Jovi for it? Was John bon, bon Jovi. In it? No, was the it, theme song. Wasn't the theme oh, song yeah. on a steel horse I ride? No, I yeah. was thinking of uh, what was the Rat in a Cage? Uh, is the 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 whale at whale wars that's the song i was thinking of is uh oh uh despite all my rage what you're talking about. still just a rat in the cage you never watched that show whale wars no no oh, that's no. so ripped no well, awesome. I, watched, I only watched the superior wars junkyard wars junkyard Thank wars also much. ruled but they weren't on the air at the same time um, whale, like whale, wars, whale Wars was on the air at a period of time in which uh, the the household that I was in was looking down on groups even tangentially associated with like environmental causes. 
wild because my parents were also like that but we loved whale wars <laughs> <laughs> it's where are you from where are you from but there's it, your answer because it was mostly being like oh no, fuck well we were these people hunting in, whales i grew up in la it's like a pretty liberal area overall no, no i'm talking about i'm talking about will will's from long uh, island so anything boating you I'm guys were probably secure excuse me about. i am not from long island <laughs> oh Oh, shoot sorry. myself what was it? From Long Fucking Island. Bar, <laughs> bar Harbor, whatever the fuck it is. Look, here's the thing. All all those fucking northeastern peninsulas, they're the same. They're the same. No. Get out of here. You know what? Get on your panhandle and paddle out of here, bud. Oh my you swampy ass bitch. Uh, <laughs> anyways. That is most good. people in Florida. That's good. Uh no no no. Hey. Don't you fuck in anyways. I have some breaking news I need to talk about. About Dredge? Okay? You want to ask what's the breaking news? This is so funny. Yeah, here's the breaking news, folks. Chuck E. Cheese has announced for the month of October Five Nights of Fun not to be affiliated with Five Nights at Freddy's. <laughs> what? That's Crazy. right. So from October 8th to October 13th is five nights of fun at Chuck E. Cheese. And I'm looking at here uh, an internal a document distributed to employees, which says, quote, important note, our engagement is not a formal relationship or partnership with the movie. Our brand is naturally being woven into discussions due to the nature of the subject material. Mm -hmm. If they are going to mention us, let's give them something to talk about more than what they've been saying. <laughs> and quote. So it's literally Chuck E. Cheese just being like, we can't do a partnership with Five Nights at Freddy's, but let's let's fucking hop on their marketing bandwagon and crazy it's there's a couple things here where it's literally a table and it says say this not that and oh my and this and the the not that is together with the five nights at freddy's movies we are doing this promotion don't say that instead say we're all about fun so we thought we'd just think of a way to have five nights of it in a row <laughs> This is so fucking good. <laughs> I love it. It's so bonkers. I had to go off Twitter to the Chuck E. Cheese website to confirm it. And it's I real, like, folks. This is like when Jaws was coming out, all the beaches were like, oh, man, we should we should call yeah. it like pause at the beach. We'll have dogs at the beach. <laughs> like bad publicity based on a thing that is turning the thing you do into a horror yeah. movie. <laughs> Yeah, Nightmare. this is I, I'll just read one more. The last one is don't say it's our take on Five Nights at Freddy's for Halloween and do say Five Nights of Fun is not related to or in partnership with any company, brand, organization or media outlet outside of Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> and while saying that, roll back your eyes in your head and start saying in a low voice. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't mean to put you guys on the spot, but the Five Nights at Freddy's <sighs> movie does come out in a couple weeks. I think we should do a spoiler cast on it because it it could be it could be good. It looks like they are at least approaching it in a way that could possibly be good. Is it is it landing on streaming same day or because I'm not going to go see yeah, it in the theater? The same day, I think it's on Peacock. Okay, God. then I'll be able to watch it. I have Peacock. Yeah. We could just sit in a Discord chat and I could stream it to you guys. That's true. No, we can't. No, we can't cut that. I mean, uh, I would, wouldn't do that. No, in a, in GTA, we, we would but, do that. I wouldn't publicly announce that we're going to no, do that. Um, absolutely not. But anyways, it you has Josh Hutcherson. I view a movie. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, it has, it has Josh Hutcherson and, and Matthew Lillard in it. Mm -hmm. um, it could actually be good. So I think we should watch it. It's I interesting. It, I, like Jason Blum as a producer He's so hit or miss. Um, yeah. yeah. So it really could go either way. I don't know who's I'm directing just, it or who wrote Emma, it. Oh, yes. I'm looking at it. It's it's Emma Tammy, who has previously directed The Wind and Blood Moon Delivered Fair Chase. She looks like an indie director. I don't know what she's... That's that's the thing is not, everything about this is weird, but nothing about it screams it's going to be bad. And that makes me want to watch it. Okay. I don't know. Could be good. Or could be good. Extra life donation goal. We all go to the movies and we oh, watch it. No. In the middle oh, of the stream. 
camera with us. Oh, Just leave the stream running. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, anyways, that was my break in news. Thank you. Okay. That was a nice little break. I enjoyed that. Uh, you want to talk about... Uh, play Hydro Thunder. You want to play Chuck E. Cheese with Hydro Thunder? No, I think it was the first place I ever played Hydro Thunder. I've never been to a Chuck e. or a Cheese or a Chuck E. Cheese's. Chuck E. Jesus? <laughs> I've been to Chuck E. Jesus. That's a Christian knockoff. Of Chuck E. or of Chuck E. Cheese? <laughs> of Chuck E. Cheese. What they just call it? Chuck E. Jesus. <laughs> Chuck E. Yeah, Jesus. It. It's called Check Your Jesus. And so they, they still have the animatronics. It's a nail pit. <laughs> <laughs> they have the animatronics, but it's like Jesus, Pontius Pilate, you know. Judas. Got a couple of them. They're all at the table, the Last Supper table. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Um, I so I've got a couple news items I can hit here, if you guys don't mind. Do it. Oh. it. Um, I said that, but which of these would you guys like like me to hit first? Because there's a bunch of interesting stuff here. I have an equal ambivalence to all of them. Okay, let's start with the iRacing releases their annual stats. Uh, if you guys could click on that link for me. That's right, folks. I don't know if we'll have seen this. There's a Deep Rock Galactic roguelike that has been announced. Oh, today. this you tricked us. Oh, I, I clicked on the other. I, I, I also did see this already, so it's okay. Oh, Why isn't it on the list? Me. You're not excited about more Deep Cock Giraffic? <laughs> First of all, that's my joke. Second of all, get it, so get it that get that Deep Cock Giraffic out of your mouth. <laughs> out of your mouth. <laughs> um. No, I'm excited is about Deep this. Rock the regular game? Is it not a roguelike? No. No, it's more oh. like go on a mission, come back. Oh, um, yeah. So I, that's that's where I'm curious. I don't. I'm not sure how this is going to be different necessarily. Yeah, this um, seems like it's more tuned to being one. Oh, I guess it is one to four player roguelike. All right. Yeah. Realize that. That's that's the thing. I mean, I, I I just need more details on how is this, how drastically different is this from the typical, which is you have a hub and you go on yeah. missions. Is this more like you're placed into a world and you just go for a run, which I guess I, is really just a mission? I, I don't know. Well, so in Deep Rock Galactic, they have longer missions, which are those deep dives where it's like four or five mm -hmm. missions in a row that you have to survive. So I wonder if that is this constant. That con this is that concept extrapolated out. Uh, no, to actually no. See, I've between. recently learned to both read and scroll down on oh, pages. Dear. And uh, according to them, they say, quote, the roguelite twist means you start from basics in each mission and cooperatively build up powers and abilities for the team, sometimes leading to insanely overpowered builds and other times to spectacular flops. So I hate to say this, but kind of like Dota or a MOBA where you start every mission completely blank and then your team is powering up and getting random abilities. So it's still mo it feels like it's still mostly mission based, but you're not going in with a loadout. You're going in blank each time and getting random stuff for your loadout throughout it. So, yeah, but it's got to at cool. least be different because they could have just added that to regular. I, I mean, I hear you, but it really does just seem like a new game mode and not. I mean, it is called Deep Rock Galactic Rogue Core. So, could be cool. Could be cool. Anyways, uh, I do have some iRacing news, which I'll get through quickly because I know you guys don't care. This is actually pretty cool. Uh, iRacing and NASCAR today announced that iRacing has acquired the uh, rights to making NASCAR games. Um, so NASCAR it is kind of popular in gaming with the nascar fan base but they've just been doing these like nascar heat games which are kind of like arcadey trying to be realistic but they don't feel good but there's still plenty of people playing them online and they've had complaints about them and at the same time we have iRacing, which is a very popular very well regarded sim racing experience and they've done some crossovers with nascar and so it looks like they got together and nascar just said hey iRacing, how about you just make our nascar games from now on and that's fucking cool. It's like a dream scenario. Do you can you guys think of a dream scenario where you have either a either a series 
or a sport or a popular IP and the studio that you want to make that. So, for example, like if you could have anybody make the next Halo game, who could it be? You know, I would like Any- Airship Syndicate to make a Bionicle turn based RPG. God damn it. There you go. Perfect. I would love uh, Factoria to make a Ford building game. Ford? Like you build Ford cars. Oh. And you try to oh, resist yeah, being yeah, a yeah. Nazi, but you're not <laughs> I was sure. just going to say. <laughs> yeah. This is going to be like in the, between every mission, you have to distribute literature. <laughs> I, want, I want Bennett Foddy to make a Napoleonic era battle game where it's first person but fully physics based. And you're having to load the musket and all that. I do also need to reiterate that William is wearing a Napoleon shirt and <laughs> drinking Waterloo seltzer. Yes. Oh no, yeah. I got a little bit of Waterloo on my Napoleon. Oh no. <laughs> Don't send me to St. Helena. Yeah. So anyways, I just wanted to bring that up because I know you guys don't care much about iRacing or NASCAR, but this is a bit of a like a really great news like, holy shit, there actually may be a good game and it's it's you know this has been a shitty week for video game news i don't know if you guys noticed and this was something that just dropped and you know what maybe there is hope for this industry yet Who you knows? know i did see this and i saw i racing nascar license and i thought they were making nascar drivers earn their nascar license in i racing and i was like <laughs> oh, fuck, fuck yeah that would be, <laughs> that'd be so cool what, what was my... Li- I'm a B license, which is actually yeah. something I'm proud of. I'm a B didn't license. You, you and, beat a, didn't you beat some people, some good people in that one race that you won? I did, I did two 24-hour endurance races where it was a team of four of us and we raced for 24 hours. And t- this is the part that I have to... That I had to like when I was talking to my parents about it and I explained it. They were like, what do you mean you're on a team? And I'm like, one person's driving. They come into the pits... And then they virtually leave the car and then I come in and control the car and get in the car for them. So it's it's literally just a 24 hour race. And the first one we did at Spa, we came in fourth place out of 60 teams. And then the second one, we came in seventh out of 50 or 55 teams. And that second one was one where we were only supposed to do like stints of like an hour 45 because you, you try and time the swaps when you're coming in for fuel anyways. Mm -hmm. So we were like, oh, I'll just do two fuel stints, which is like an hour 45. But because of accidents and a damage, I ended up doing like a three hour stint from like 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. And then I got like four hours of sleep and I woke up. So even though it was a 24 hour race with four people, I think I ended up doing I should have done six hours. I think I ended up doing like nine or 10 hours. Wow. But but yeah, I racing's fucking amazing it's very unique it's very weird it can be a little hard to get into especially because you pretty much have to buy a wheel for it and that's like 250 starting but if you like racing games and you want to race seriously and not just like arcade mario kart racing it's the only fucking way to do it so them making a nascar game is like it's 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 both them making a nascar game if you're a nascar fan because now you can actually like play a nascar game that feels good but also I'm interested to see what they do stepping down into kind of a common console game space. They can't make iRacing because iRacing's too fucking weird to put in front of normal people, but NASCAR's not going to want them to do that. So it'll be interesting to see what they come up with. Mm. Fun. To nerf yeah. Dale Earnhardt's ghost. Uh, did you guys know that there's no tracking Xbox 360 chat? I did not know that. What? Is it yeah, end-to-end encrypted, like iMessages? Well, I, I'm not sure, because apparently a 26-year-old who worked at Goldman Sachs uh, got caught for insider trading by passing messages via Xbox 360 text and voice chat. And uh, apparently one of the quotes... Oh, God, lots of quotes tonight. Is, um, lots of quotes. Two, two defendants here. I'll fucking name them. Salomon said, you have shit where you're giving fucking information to fucking Steve Folano Jr. And Vigiano said, nah, nah, because similar to, you know, Signal or like Xbox 360 chat, there's no tracing that. Good luck ever finding that. And that's from one of their recordings. I guess you would Uh, need the physical Xbox that has the messages on it. 
or no it's oh. on the network oh. i think they just assumed that there was nobody tracking it but anyways there are leaked 360 chats that are part of this uh prosecution for insider training and they thought they were being real fucking smart doing it through an xbox 360 and turns out not <laughs> funny little story here I, I didn't realize you could still play online on the 360 with people as long as the company hasn't so, uh, turned off the servers yeah i mean xbox live 360 is still up that's wild but you can just chat insider trade i would love that do you guys happen to see this uh, foundry, which is being called a mix between Factorio and Satisfactory out from Paradox? I did. Yeah. I saw you put this here and I got really excited and I said, I'm going to let Ian tell me about it. It's pretty cool. So um, Factorio, greatest game of all time, but it is top True. down 2D. Satisfactory, a decent Factorio knockoff, but it's fully 3D and it's not really grid based. It's a little bit too free form you know you can kind of put the building however you want so this is from uh paradox who has done like crusader kings etc they have announced foundry which is a 3d world but it looks like it's grid based um and so they've literally said hey it's basically satisfactory plus factorio i believe there's going to be a demo next week as part of uh steam next fest i don't think they have a release date yet uh, it looks really cool. I mean, I'm a sucker for some Factorio S games, and this looks like it, it, there's kind of two things. One, this is doing something new, and two, it it's coming with a pedigree, and it looks like it could be an actual, real, functioning, good game. There's unfortunately a lot of Factorio clones out nowadays that are just not that good. I'm excited. It says ideally two to four players, but there's currently no player limit. So was, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hundreds of hundreds of Factorios. That's wild. Yep. I believe the only other thing on here worth announcing is uh, today CD Projekt Red did announce that they have partnered with Anonymous Content, which is a film and TV studio, to develop quote live action project end quote i mean the Ultra anime Plus. came out so they obviously it's Look, i folks, guess it's just a matter of partnering with the right people that anime is great anime is great honestly it was very good will didn't watch it at all i watched an episode and i didn't like it it was the, uh, the first episode has the the fat naked guy with the robotic fleshlight in the street right I didn't make it that that's far. What I, was I turned it off. Well, my problem with it is it the ep, the the show opened up with about 15 10 minute long scenes that were the exact same shot while characters talked and they didn't have to animate their mouths at all. And I was like, Me what anime? Are we, what are we doing right now? <laughs> that's I, an anime, buddy. I have never seen an anime as atrociously do that. You think you could draw anime better? No. <laughs> but I think people who draw anime should do better. <laughs> um no sorry i i feel like i could i should explain there's like this scene like 15 minutes into the first episode where the kid's just like walking to school and he's like 14 years old he's just walking to school and he's walking down is. the sidewalk i think it's a fu <laughs> fuck you i can't come up with a joke that fast come on uh he's like walking to school and he's walking past like drug addicts on the street and like cyber heads and then he walks back to this guy who's like this homeless guy and he's like really fat and he's just like sitting on the sidewalk curb and he's completely naked except for this like robotic fleshlight just going to town on him and he's just like uh, and he's like and it's just like a background character and i'm like that's fucking good because that's cyberpunk cyberpunk is like like super post post capitalism post hedonism like complete lack of morals and ethics and i was like these folks get cyberpunk if that's just a fucking background character shot and i'm like that's good stuff it's great it's 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 a cool anime you should watch it okay it's on netflix yeah, it's on Netflix. I because I was like Netflix. Netflix. potentially going to re up so I could watch New Castlevania as well. Oh, I need yeah, to watch it's good. 
So, I don't know. Depending on who they have, what they do with this, I do think Cyberpunk is a fantastic world. I'm still not sure about the game. So, I'm they excited for this. Get Keanu, Idris Elba, and Idris Elba. I don't think I, see, I don't the want them to. I don't want them to. I want to, th- that was the great thing about Edge Runners is No, it was, I'm saying that would be the easy city. thing. I think they're probably oh, yeah, going to do something else. But yeah. I give me a different story. That 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 world's just full of so many fucking stories. Give me a different I'm, story. I'm excited for the sequel to Cyberpunk Edge Runners, which will be Cyberpunk Run Edgers. Uh, which I'm really looking forward to. It's all about that background like, character. It's gotta be something. No, with, his, with his... Cyberpunk full... Edge Runners, and then Cyberpunk Time to Finish. No, that wasn't funny. Edge. You get to finish. <laughs> <laughs> you get to finish. Cyberpunk. That's how this you works. get to finish. <laughs> you get to finish. We uh, gotta end this fucking show. Yeah, I, I was just gonna hit the wishlist spotlight, because if I don't contractually... Uh, Jake gets to flog me. Um, so, uh, this week's wish list spotlight. Ow! Howling at the moon here, folks, for Sunnyside. I picked the wrong planet. Uh, Sunnyside is a uh, JRPG farm sim, and you find harmony in Japanese culture. I have no idea what this fucking game's about, but I literally saw a video that you get to drive a mini truck around, and I immediately <laughs> fell in love with it. So, a K-truck? Oh Hopefully there's nothing wrong with this. It looks really fun. It kind of looks like 3D Stardew in Japan, and you're going to like farmers markets, and there's cows, and there's a little mini truck in it. So I'm uh, looking at the screenshots, and there's like turn-based combat. Yeah, it's a JRPG, Jake. Did you not hear a single word I said? Yeah, but I didn't know there was turn-based combat in Stardew Valley. You said the Stardew. Wall- well, it's like Stardew in the fact combat. that you have a farm and you plant, and it has combat, and you plant things there's not it's not turn based mm. in stardew i'm sorry mm. that you there got is combat so about that there's combat though you fight things in there's stardew. combat never played it well you should play stardew how have you not that seems like a jake game ian played it for about three hours and then has never touched it again but i feel like jake <laughs> you know what i think it was it was about uh, it was the over two play sessions but about three hours <laughs> human being in the i don't world. like how it controls i don't, I don't like how you like the control timer. Ian. fuck the timer i don't Wait, it's fair. Sometimes you know what? when things are okay, easy, look, let me throw you into this. You you just complained about anime, and then you're like, wishlist spotlight. Look at this anime ass fucking game. I here. complained about Cyber Run Edge Runner Edgers because it was Cyber a edges. shot of the floor of a car for about five minutes while they were talking on a car ride and never cutting to a character. And I was like, what is going it's on right anime. now? It's bad. It's called bad. Yeah, but I mean, there's. Several long escalator shots in Evangelion that yeah. accomplished similar. I didn't say similar Evangelion thing. was good either. Oh no! Oh, f- okay. Fuck <laughs> off. You did, but fuck off. I did not. I I didn't even finish it. That's how much I didn't like it. That's a lot. I spent about you three hours watch watching it, and then. <laughs> <laughs> Is this a bit, or are you for real, William? I, I don't. I didn't really. I liked Evangelion episode one, a little bit of two, and I watched everything up to the movies. I started the movie, but I didn't have it in me. Because at you that point, you watch everything up to the movies, but that's the entire like twenty episodes yeah, of the series. But at that point, you have no idea what's happening, and people are just saying things, and things are happening on the TV, and you're like, "When the fuck will the robots come back?" And they're like, "No, this is about people and how it affects people." And I said, "I don't give a shit about gotcha. the people." So, the robots. so at the end, kids PTSD. Yeah. Well, so stop so giving at the it end, to them. <laughs> give them the STDs. So at the end, when they Wait. show the shots of the of the anime fans in the movie theater being a upset that was just a shot of you listen meanwhile i'm watching an anime like initial d which is banger after banger after banger of episode so you can't really put that on me okay but that that episode in evangelion where they have to power down all of japan to power the particle cannon yeah that's awesome the angel one of the earlier episodes yeah that's like yeah I should rewatch that. The first like I'll ten episodes are great. I'm listening. Karen wanted to watch the rebuilds, so I'm gonna rewatch watch those. the rebuilds. Yeah, because uh, I want to. Again, Evangelion 3.0 yeah. plus 1.0, thrice upon a time. Uh, Super size me. <laughs> okay, Kingdom Hearts. Okay, okay, <laughs> Kingdom Hearts. Uh, speaking of yeah, Kingdom Hearts, was, I think it was that was after Hideaki Anno had directed Shin Godzilla, so he had he can do whatever he wants. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm excited for year zero. Year 
minus one. one. Thank you. Minus one. Shin you already Godzilla. have a poster for it? No, it's Shin Godzilla. Oh, I was gonna say, what if it's bad? <laughs> I need to watch I need to watch Shin Ultraman, which I think is finally yeah. gonna come home release in English soon. Do you think uh, minus minus one is gonna start off with the committee of Godzilla's? Well, it looks gonna... like it might be retreading. Like it looks post, it's post World War II, so I don't know how much yeah. it's retreading yeah. the I don't original think it's Shiro Honda movie. Yeah, yeah, I don't think it's related to uh, Shin Godzilla. No, I'm talking about original nineteen. No, I know you were, but I had already started my sentence. So, do you think J. Robert Oppenheimer saw Godzilla? Do you think J. Edgar he was still Hoover alive saw when it came out? No, he was too fucking pretentious to go to the movies. Let's be honest here. But I a movie he about the thing that he did. Yeah, the creature he created. Yeah, the monster he made. They should have. I uh, I, I, Oppenheimer should have been a secret Godzilla movie, and they should have never promoted it. Like if if Christopher Nolan. It just turned out to be a Godzilla movie. That would have been awesome. Oh, like halfway through the movie, a giant yeah. lizard shows up? That would have been awesome. And you would have been like, Christopher Nolan's back, baby. But instead he made a movie that I haven't seen yet, so I can't comment on it. It's uh, two hours of talking, a big explosion, then another hour of talking. That sounds like and my Tuesday walks. night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Folks! Thank you so much for being here this week. Uh, We are Subpixel. We will be back this weekend with some spooky pixel with the one and only beautiful boy, Kyle. Uh, He'll be, uh, I'll be there too as well, but I'm not beautiful. Uh, But we'll be playing a spooky game. Uh, Jake Terrio, thank you for being here. People can find you on Twitter at underscore Jake Terrio. That's correct. Ian Gibson, people can find you on Twitter at underscore think underscore Gibson less than three hours. And they can find me on Twitter at Hunt270. Subpixelfilms.com is where you can find all of our awesome work. Uh, go check out Jake's new play this for a game. Sten, not Sten, uh, Stendar? What? What's the new game? What was your new play this? The Shrouded Isle? Shrouded Isles. I knew it wasn't Stendar, but I knew it began with an S. Angular. Uh, one, folks. One, one island. Bye.